Red Max Entertainment, turning music into memories. Alrighty guys, so this is a My DMX 3.0 tutorial brought to you by Brandon from Red Max Entertainment. This is the first kind of tutorial look video that I'm doing. Um, I, mean, I haven't really done one of these on this channel yet, but um, I just got this software and I've been kind of learning it myself because it, it just was released on the 24th of October 2016. So um, it was hard for me to kind of find videos and stuff on YouTube. I actually I didn't find any until about a day ago. Um, as far as this software goes and and uh, the new features of it and stuff like that. So um, for anybody out there that has my DMX 3.0, it's kind of going to be a look into it. Um, I encourage you to watch this. I'll show you the information I know about it so far. And uh, as I learn more, I'll do some more in-depth tutorials, um, including the iPad software, running it with MIDI, um, and then I'll show you my actual lighting setup with it. But for today's video, I set up um, this show, um, DJ Uplight. So this is a show that I programmed using four PAR cans. And it's uh, two Mega Par Pros, two Slim Pars, 56s, and then one Ultra Bar 6 on the front of my DJ booth. Um, and the Pars behind my DJ booth against the wall, left to right, one through four. Um, so it's just a simple lighting show I've set up, none of the effects lighting and stuff, just to kind of show you guys this. So the biggest difference between 2.0 and 3.0, or 2.1 and 3.0, is um, this this interface that you're brought to um, now I'm not going to talk about what 2.1 is in case you didn't have that um, I'm just gonna jump right into 3.0 but if you did you'll be able to tell the differences and you'll realize that so uh, so let's get started let's jump right in so um, the basically you're, when you open it up you're gonna be brought to this patch window which basically looks the same as the patch window on 2.1 um, you got your patch bay here where you can see all 512 DMX channels just by scrolling down unless I make this smaller Then I can see all of them at once um, But you can see all 512 DMX channels here and then Over here is the same as 2.1 so you can search your fixture sav and mega par pro Mega par profile all models, okay, and then you got your different modes and then right here you see what that mode is so seven channel six channel four channel so the mega par pros don't actually have a seven channel they have a six so this is the one that then i could drag in here and it patches it right in so for right now i'm going to delete that because i already have those patched in but that's how you would patch in your fixtures and you could also go down here enter all the information about it and then patch it in that way as well let me just see what that was Okay, cool. So you could patch it that way. Um, and now this new interface down here is different in the fact that beforehand you had all 512 faders here. You had them across the bottom here. So for all 512 channels, you had them across here. So say your Mega Par Pro is six channel mode, the first six faders from one through six, because that's where you addressed it, you would use the first six faders. And then if you have this one addressed to 27 you had to scroll across to 27 unless you had a large screen to run it on where you could see hundreds of channels you know so this one is a lot more economical in the sense um, that you can do a lot more in this one screen rather than bouncing around you know you got your effects here and stuff like that so we'll get into that so after you patch your fixtures in it also shows you the dip switch configuration just like a 2.1 but in case you're new to this software in general, that's going to be your dip switch configuration for some lights that use that. And then the next tab down is your edit tab. So this is just like the 2.1 software. So the 2.1 software had this edit tab. It had the patch tab, had edit, and it had live. It didn't have the show tab, which we'll get into um, in a second. So back to the edit tab. This is where you're going to edit your scenes. Now, rather than the previous 2.1 software, um, this one allows you to program your scenes, move them around, put them in groups. So I could drag this one and move it up here if I want, you know, and move them, move the scenes around once I program them. So these are each a scene that I programmed. 
red, red strobing, red chasing, um, blackout. I put a blackout at the top of every group, but basically if I scroll over here, I created several groups and the way I organized it was by color. So all my reds, my red chases, my red strobes, my red washes, my red flashes, my red blackout, my, you know, red everything. And then the next one, green, blue. Now, the only downside I see right now, which I believe I could change, but the downside I see right now is green right now. This is kind of like a lime green, almost mistake it for yellow kind of thing. Um, when you click on a scene to change the color, you go over here to the properties window. Um, and these are the colors you get, which I wish there was like a color wheel so that I could really customize the color. So that's as green as I could get, which is what it is, you know? Um, so maybe that's a feature that I'll add. Maybe it's here. I don't even know about it. So, um, we'll check that out soon. Um, okay. So basically up here, this add button here is how you're going to add a new group. So by default, you'll have one group, but if I want to add a new group, I press that, and now you'll see all the way on the right here, if I scroll over, there's a new group highlighted up here. So now I can change the name. So I'm going to make this white. I think I already have a white, but I'm going to make this white, right? So then I'm going to press enter, and there it is right there. Now here, I'm going to make it this light blue, all right, and there's the scene so far, there's the customization. So you got all these properties now that you can control the scene so to better go through these I'm gonna to go to a scene that I already have programmed um, so right here let's say uh, let's do red so this is um, the red one basically now if I go to general right this is going to show me all 512 channels just like on the old one but in half the screen so you do have to really scroll but this is going to show me all 512 channels, their corresponding functions, right? So my first patch fixture on channels 1 through 6 is one of my mega pars. So 1, 2, 3, red, green, blue. 4 is ultraviolet UV that it has built in. 5 is going to be your strobing, your flashing. And 6 is going to be your master dimmer. So without this in, you'll see the fixture right here goes from strobing to off. And then these you can, well, with with 2.1, this I'm going to tell you, with 2.1, you clicked on this, and it brought you up the color wheel. Not in 3.1, or in 3.0, rather. 3.0, to get to that color wheel, you're going to go to your palette here, okay? Then once you go to your palette, you have your pan and tilt for your moving heads, okay? You have some other features, too. You have your color wheel. Okay, and then you have your dimmer, your master dimmer um, for that fixture. So while we're over at this menu here, you can go to your effect too. This is where you add your effects. No more effects engine, no more uh, scene builder. This is all right here. This is practically your scene builder, and this is where you'd add your effects. Same effects. Um, I haven't noticed anything new. And you could edit everything here, export it, save it as a thing, turn your fixtures on. The I Some of the icons are new. Um, takes a little getting used to. We'll go more in depth in a later video with that. So, back to this now. We're at our scene. We want to program our lights. So, let me go to this blank scene, right? I could do this just like the old one. And I can grab this, right? And I can, you know, set this light to red, set this one to green. And then I don't forget about my master dimmers. And my strobe for this fixture has to be all the way up in order for it to be solid on. So, I'm going to turn that on. This is a slim part. So once I set those up, you know, I could do that, get all my fixtures set, and then that scene saved or it's finished. Um, an easier way to do it, I have to do each fixture individually here. So if I do this Megapar Pro, right, and I skip to the next Megapar Pro here, I have to do them all individually, which works if I'm looking for a different effect. However, if I'm looking for say everything to be red a quicker way is these down here these buttons down here so I've got an ultra bar 6 right now it jumps me right to the ultra bar 6 which I'm running in 11 channel mode right now it jumps me right to that screen so
culture bar scene, right? You'll notice in this scene builder window that it's all highlighted. Those are the boxes for the ultra bar six. And then over here, I get the sliders just for the ultra bar six. There's no scroll bar anymore. This is just the ultra bar six. So everything I do here, if I want the ultra bar six green, there it is. There it's green. Let me make the outsides blue. Okay. Now I do that. Say I had two ultra bar sixes patched in, you'd see both of them highlighted here and I'd be controlling both of them. So let me get my master dimmer up. Now let me go to my slim parts. So you'll notice when I click on the slim part tab, both of them are highlighted right off the bat. They're both selected. Now I can bring the master dimmer up, make them blue. But say I want this one red here, just click outside the box, right? Now you'll see this is locked in because I'm not on any fixture. But if I just want this one red, just highlight that one, make it red. Now the other one's still blue if I select that. But if I select both of them, it's not going to let me do anything because they're now two separate. They've got two separate controls on them. So I can select them individually and change them back. And then I can go to my mega parts, right? And let me make these like a teal. So I got my strobe up on those two. So some of these um, profiles that they created aren't exactly accurate. For example, this one, it's saying that this is strobing now. It's not actually strobing. My real fixture um, isn't plugged in right now, but it's not actually strobing. It would be solid on. That's how this fixture works.